Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 17th, 2022 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got an interesting guest post today from Gephardt. Gephardt is proposing a fairly simple and cheap and easy way to fight back against the evil mate attack. The evil mate attack, well, uh, comes from the scenario where you are leaving a laptop in a hotel room and an evil mate has physical access to the system and is then, of course, potentially able to uh, disrupt or uh, compromise the system. We have multiple technical controls for this, like uh, various sort of pre-boot protections or uh, fully encrypted drives and the like. But there's, of course, always a chance that uh, some kind of implant is being installed or such, and uh, that's uh, difficult to defend against. What uh, Gephardt is proposing is a fairly simple little uh, trick where uh, before you leave your laptop alone, you are just uh, typing the first letter of your password in the screen. Has to be the real password, so the, the first letter of your actual password, not a random letter. And then the idea is when you come back, uh, you just uh, type the remainder of your password. If someone uh, got a hold of your system. First of all, they may have just you know, removed that letter because they rebooted the system or such, and that would be pretty obvious. But even if they would have seen that you already typed one letter, well, they don't know your password, so they don't know what the letter is. And uh, yes, and they have a one in whatever, you know, 60 or so chance if you're counting lower, uppercase, special characters and such, but uh, still a fairly low chance in actually getting the right letter uh, typed there. Interesting proposal, and Gephardt is really just looking so for a little bit feedback on uh, how this could work or uh, not work. Then we got a couple of additional details and proof of concept exploits for vulnerabilities patch recently. Uh, one is a CVE 2022-41622. That's an unauthenticated remote code execution in the SOAP API of F5's Big IP a product. Now, the actual problem here is cross-site request forgery. So where I can trick a user to submit a request uh, to the F5 uh, Big IP admin uh, console. And then of course, the credentials would be included because uh, there are no cross-site request forgery protections included in this uh, product. It's uh, pretty straightforward to exploit as a lot of these cross-site request forgery uh, vulnerabilities and uh, the advisory that was now published by Rapid7 includes additional details like the exact uh, URL here that's affected uh, by uh, this particular vulnerability. The actual uh, end result of this would be remote code execution and an attacker uh, would be able to gain persistent access to the device. So this is certainly a must patch vulnerability. Now, even though uh, Rapid7, and I think rightfully says that exploitation isn't terribly likely because cross request forgery, of course, always has these requirements that an attacker knows who to trick to actually send the request and that that individual is also still logged into the device. According to Rapid7, F5 will make hotfixes for these issues available on request. Another vulnerability we got more details uh, about is a vulnerability that Apple fixed uh, end of October with its update for iOS 16.1 and iPad OS 16. Pretty interesting vulnerability because it's in the Apple neural engine. So essentially that machine learning part that is included in Apple's operating systems. And the uh, interesting part here is that by loading a malicious model, essentially, uh, you can gain arbitrary code execution. 
The discoverer of the vulnerability who uses the alias uh, Simo or Simo uh, did publish now a GitHub post with additional details how this could possibly be exploited. The post uh, stops short of actually providing a uh, proof of concept for uh, this particular uh, vulnerability. And Brian Grebs has an interesting blog post uh, with details uh, regarding a banking malware group uh, that calls itself the Disneyland uh, team. One of uh, their sort of unique uh, skills is uh, to register lookalike domain names, some of them uh, taking advantage of international characters uh, using the Punicode encoding. Uh, this uh, hasn't been seen a lot. Uh, yes, it has happened in the past, but it's tricky to actually uh, come up with sort of Punicode. It gets rendered well in different browsers. Apparently, they have had some success with uh, these uh, domain names that were then mistaken for the actual uh, malicious valid site. One weak point here when it comes to Punicode tends to be Safari. Uh, Safari on iOS and macOS is sort of the one browser that's most likely going to display international characters instead of the Punicode representation of a domain name. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. As usual, if you like this, well, uh, please uh, tell your friends about it or tell anybody about uh, this podcast. The reason I'm putting them out every day is because people are listening. So make sure people are listening and the podcasts will come. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.